Hi everybody and welcome to Push Your Luck video review number 22. My name is Eric Teo and today we'll be looking at Istanbul. A uh, recent Cannes Beauty Jairus nominee 2014 is uh, designed by Rudiger Dorn who has brought you light games like Las Vegas and even heavier games like Goa. Uh, Istanbul is published by Eldorak Entertainment Group and it plays 2 to 5 players and lasts about 45 to 60 minutes. It is a lightweight, light to medium weight game where players are racing to get 5 gems. Whoever gets 5 gems first will trigger the end game condition and when the game ends, players will see whoever has the most gems and that player will be the winner. So let's take a look at what the game, uh, game components are, the gameplay and my final thoughts. Okay, this is the bot setup for Istanbul. Now take note that these are actually uh, tiles that you can place on a board to form a 4x4 four four grid. You can uh, follow a few different setups. That's set up for shorter uh, game, shorter path, longer path. You can even randomize, uh, randomly set up the board. There are only a few things you need to take note of. First, the fountain needs to be in one of the four middle uh, squares. All right? And also, the next thing you need to take note is that the black market and the tea house. Black market and the tea house must be at least three spaces away. So black market and tea house must be at least three spaces away. But otherwise, you're free to set up the board as and how you like it. Now after the board is set up, players will have their own little cut. You can see this little cut which will denote how many resources you have. There's uh, blue gems and uh, red cloth and I think it's green sugar and yellow fruits. There's also a uh, space for you to place to place the gems that you collected. So uh, this is to let people know how many gems you collected and how far are you away from victory. If uh, there's uh, so it's always five gems. If you play two players, then you need to collect six gems to trigger the game end condition. There are slots here. Why? Because later on you'll be able to upgrade your card to be able to put more things. So you can go to the the Wayne Wright, which you can then buy uh, extensions to plug into your card. Okay. Uh, so this is the the, the player card. Uh, each player will also start off with one of these action cards, which will usually give you a certain benefits and uh, can increase the, number, increase the number of actions you can take during the entire game. So after the board is set up, everybody will, uh, all the players will start at the fountain. So you have, each player will have this stack of uh, four assistants as well as one merchant. This will be stacked in this way and will be placed onto the fountain. Now how do you play the game? During your turn, a player can or choose where his merchant is and then move one or two steps diagonally. That means up, down, left, right. You cannot move diagonally in the game. So wherever you move, okay, certain things will happen. You can take a look at this very handy player aid, which will tell you what you need to take note of. So you move first. You move your stack to one or two spaces, and when you end there, you must see whether you are uh, you can drop off an assistant or you can land on top of an assistant. Now, what do I mean by that? This whole game revolves around whether you have people underneath you or whether you can go to a place where you have previously dropped off your assistance. So when you go to a place, if, you're still, if you still have people underneath you and there are nobody in that location, you will drop off an assistant, like, like so. This will mean that you can still continue your action, you will not uh, stop your action, you will not kind of skip your turn. Okay? If you are unfortunate and did not plan correctly and you land in a place by yourself, as a merchant by yourself, where there's no assistance, then you will not be able to do any action at all. Instead, you actually skip your turn and your turn ends immediately. Okay, so proper planning is quite vital. If you land in a place where there is an assistant there, you pick up the assistant, which means that you take your merchant and stack it on top of the assistant, and like so, and then you still be able to do your action. So that's the most important thing. Eh? You can move one or two spaces. Uh, make sure you the space where you end up with, you can either drop off an assistant or you can take back an assistant. Now, after that, you look through the next few steps. If you encounter other merchants, you need to pay the other merchant $2 each. So, uh, Lira. So in the game, uh, everybody will start with some, some certain amount of money. The sub player will start with $2, and then each subsequent player after that will get plus one of the previous player. So, uh, two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth. Now, if you land and uh, land another uh, encounter another merchant, which means that if you meet another uh, player's merchant piece, you need to play that player two dollars. If you cannot pay, you also skip your turn, which means that you end your turn immediately. So it's not very good. 
and that is where most of the interaction come in. People not want to go to that place because they do not want to give you two do two liras, uh, or they do not have money to give you two liras, or is they plan it such that they have just enough money to buy things, and because of you being there, you affect their decisions. So that is where most of the interaction will occur as well. Now next, you can carry out action on a place. Each location on the board will give you a certain action that you can do. I'll explain each location uh, individually later on in the game, and later on in this video. Next, afterwards you may encounter other family members. Now, in the, in the start of the game, players will, be, will have these uh, round cylinder things which will represent your family member. They will start up at the police station. If you encounter other players, family members in other areas except for the police station, you will be able to do two things. You will send them back to the police station and you can take one bonus card or three lira for each of them. So this is quite good. Sometimes you want to catch people's other players or family members. Next, the governor piece. So there's a governor piece, this longer uh, purple cylinder, which at the beginning of the game will be randomly determined where they are based on the number you roll and the number indicated on each of the, uh, the, the bigger number of each of the uh, tiles. The governor will give you, it's optional, the action is optional, the governor will give you one bonus card and you, you need to discard one card to keep whatever card that you decided to take or you can just discard any other card or you, need to pay, you can pay $2 to do that. Then you need to roll the dice and the governor will go to a new location. Smuggler. If you, come, if you encounter this black cylinder, smuggler will give you one good and then you need to pay off one good or you can return back to uh, pay, pay two lira. Then you roll dice and the smuggler will go to a new location. So that's the gist of the game. You move around, you try to do actions in the, in the various tiles and you get gems. And you try to collect gems faster than everybody else and if you manage to get five gems and when the game ends you still hold the lead in gems, then you win the game. Let's go through what each of the tiles mean. Right? Because th this is the, also the meat of the game, where the actions you can do in different tiles. Okay? <clears throat> Let's start the black market. Now the black market, um, this symbol means that you can get one uh, red, one green, one yellow good, and then you roll a dice. So this is a gambling way. So you roll dice, and if you roll seven or eight, you get one blue. If you roll nine, ten, you get two blue. If you roll eleven or twelve, you get three blue. So this is the black market. How do you indicate resources on your card? You just need to move your, you just need to move the the cube uh, that many spaces to the right. This will indicate, like for example, if I have gotten uh, two blues, so I'll just move two to the right. Next, the police station. If you you go there and your uh, family member is there, you can get to move your family member anywhere on the board. And when you land there, you do the action on the board. So in a way, it kind of, kind of helps you by giving you an extra action. Next, the caravansary. Caravansary, oh that's interesting. All right, caravansary. So what do you do? You get to take two cards, two of bonus cards. I you take from the discard pile, right? And you cannot look through the discard pile, you can only take the top one, or you can take from the draw deck, the draw pile there. So after you look at two, you need to put one back into the discard pile. Okay, so it's quite useful because sometimes uh, when player plays very powerful cards, you can you may want to get it, so you can come to the uh, caravansary to get the cards. Next. There are uh, two, there's another one, uh, this is the fruit warehouse. What happens when you come here, you max out your yellow, uh, yellow resources. So you just need to take your cut and just uh, push it all the way to the right. This is, called, uh, this is the fruit warehouse. And there's another one called the spice warehouse, uh, which will give you max green. All right, so these are the only, uh, and then the last one is the fabric warehouse, which will give you uh, max red. Okay, so these are the three uh, ways to get resources, the green, the red, and the yellow, and this will be the only, uh, this is the way to get the blue resources. There are other ways to get the resources as well on the board, I'll show you them to you later. Next, small market. Small market, so what happens in the small market when you go there, you look at the topmost order, and you try to fulfill as many of it as you can, which means that you're selling, uh, if you can sell one blue, two yellow, two green, you sell five goods, you get $20. If you, you can also sell less than that. If you sell one good, you get $2, two goods, $5, and so on and so forth. After you're done selling good, you take the top order and move it underneath, which will then review a new order. So whoever now goes to the market, the small market will now encounter, we need to try to fulfill this uh, requirements, this order. 
on the board there's also a large market right which has a which has a darker order uh, darker market order and it'll give you more money so uh, instead of two dollars it give you three dollars instead of five give you seven instead of nine give you twelve instead of fourteen give you eighteen instead of twenty give you twenty five so this is another this is a larger market so you sell you get more goods but I think the the goods are a bit more expensive as well harder to get because I think they have a lot of blue goods that you need to ship to, to fulfill next the gemstone dealer now at the start this this will be set up based on the number of players all right and uh, this is an, uh, this is one of the more straightforward ways to get gems so you go there you see what is the last number that's reviewed so in this case it's 15 you pay 15 dollars and you get this gem so the next turn you get need to pay 16 dollars and so on and so forth so it gets more and more expensive if the later you go to the gemstone dealer to buy gems this one of the most straightforward ways to get gems next the fountain now you can end up in the fountain with only your merchant left. What the fountain does is it will recall all your assistants back to you. It's like you're whistling wee wee and all of the the assistants that are all scattered around the entire board will come back to you and will form back under your stack. So this is a quick and easy way to get back your assistants. If you have planned wrongly also. Next, uh, it's a small moss. So there's a small moss and there's a large there's a small moss and then there's a great mosque, right? Small moss and great moss. So what do these moss do? So when you end there, you can look at the top requirement. So for example, for this one, it means that if you have at least two red goods, return one red good and you get to keep this tile. If you have two green goods, return one green good and you get to keep this tile. Now subsequent uh, tiles underneath will have will be a bit more difficult. So the next one underneath is you have, must have at least three goods and return one tile. Then you get to take the tile. Okay, so what happens if you have two of these tiles? Once you collected two of these tiles, you get to take one gem. You can only do this once, so you cannot keep going back there and keep getting more and more tiles. Now, each of these tiles will also give you benefits. If you went to an area where you need to roll dice, you can either change one dice to a four or re-roll both dice. So each of these tiles can activate once per, per your turn. This will mean that when you are in a place where you are buying, you are getting, uh, getting goods, you can pay $2 to get one good of any of this type. So either the blue, the red, the green, or the yellow. For the, for the great mosque, all right, if you have at least blue, two blue, you return one and you get a fifth assistant. So at the start, each of us will have one merchant and four assistants underneath us. By using this, we get a fifth assistant underneath us, which will increase the range or the, the actions that we need to do before we need to go back to the fountain. If you have two yellows, you must return one yellow. And the action for this is, uh, you can pay $2 to take one assistant from anywhere on the board and put it underneath your merchant. So this is also very helpful. Once you get both tiles, you also get to take the gem uh, in, into your wheelbarrow. Next, the tea house. This now this is one of the more interesting uh, tiles and a lot of people like to go there uh, because of the, the gambling nature. So first the player will see a number from 3 to 12. Then you roll a dice. If the dice shows it's bigger than or equal to the number you say, you get that amount of money that you set. If it is less than, you get only $2 as a consolation prize. So the typical numbers that people will say will be 7 and 8 because usually a lot of the averages you, you probably will roll higher than that and you get 7 and 8 and you can get seven eight dollars as well now the tiles that i mentioned just now the at a small mosque you can either change one of the one of the uh, the dice to four or you can reroll both dice this will be very helpful if you like to go to the tea house to gamble <coughs> post office okay post office is also where you can get resources at the start the setup will be in this way so whoever comes to post office will get one green Two dollars and one yellow. After that, they'll shift four of these cubes down. So whoever next comes to the post office will get one red, two green, and one yellow. Then they'll also shift this down. So the next one come will get one red, three dollars, and one yellow. One red, one blue, three dollars. One red, one blue, four dollars. Once the last person has pushed this, uh, pushed this cube uh, down, and they gotten the, this the, the top amount, they need to move everything back up again. So it, they kind of reset the post office. So this is a good way to get resources. Uh, it's not particularly efficient, but 
it does help you to uh, get the resources that you need, the, that, that one more yellow or that one more dollar that you need. So this is a post office. Sultan's Palace. Now this is uh, another way to get the gem as well. Unlike, uh, unlike the, the gem stone dealer, where you can pay money to get gems, this Sultan's Palace needs resources to get gems. So you need to pay off uh, one blue, one red, one green, one yellow, and one of anything, and then you can get this gem. The next person will need to pay two blue, uh, one green, one uh, one green, one red, and one yellow, and one of anything to get this gem, and so on and so forth. So this is another way to get gems, but it's poss possibly one of the more difficult ones to get gems, because usually you'll be selling resources to get money, and then going to the gemstone tier to buy, because that seems to be most straight straightforward. This seems to be more difficult to get the gems here. But nevertheless, it is still one of the ways to get gems. Lastly, the last tile we're looking at is the Wainwright. So as mentioned, you can come here to buy uh, extensions, which will allow you to keep more resources onto your card. So take note that right now, at the beginning, we can only store two of each type of uh, resources on our card. This will allow you to extend more. So you can have a maximum of five resources of each type on your card. If you manage to max out your entire card, that means you have bought all three extensions for yourself, right? you'll be able to get one gem here. Take note that there will not be a competition because uh, depending on number of players, uh, that number of uh, uh, card extensions times multiplied by three will be available on the rain, right? So you cannot block people in this way. Okay. Now there are quite a lot of cards that we get throughout the game and you can play any number of cards uh, during your turn. So, so most of the cards are listed here. What they can do, they are listed here. So for example, uh, some cards give you one good, take five dollars, can move three spaces, or four spaces instead of one or two. You can stay put instead of moving one or two spaces. Uh, as explained earlier in this video, you must always move during your turn. This allows you to stay put and activate the action. Move one system back to your merchant. Send your family member to the police station. Take one bonus card or three lira. Now typically when you encounter your own family member, nothing happens. All right, only if you encounter other players' family member or they encounter your family member, then they will send your family member back to the police station and then they will get this benefit. Sell any goods at the small market, carry out the Southern Palace action twice. Southern Action Palace is the one where you uh, give goods to get a gem. All right, so you can now do it twice. So in, this is one of the Cobra Strike, the, the, ter the term that we use for sudden, uh, sudden actions that allow you to trigger an endgame condition or allow you to win, score a lot of points and win. This allows you to carry out the post office action twice. Post office is where you get goods uh, from for free. This one allows you to carry out the gemstone dealer action twice. That means you buy two gems at one time. So this could also be one of those things that would trigger the end game condition. Right? The other side of the player 8 is exactly the same as this side. So it's a bit redundant. Anyway, so that's the gist of the game of Istanbul. Let's go to uh, my final thoughts. And so that's the gameplay and the rules explanation of Istanbul. Uh, Istanbul is uh, quite a light game, light, lightweight, light and slightly bordering on a medium weight game. Um, when I first heard about it, I did ask around how it was and they did mention it's quite light so I wasn't too interested in it uh, but I did manage to borrow a copy and play and my friends and I both like it quite a bit. And my friends like it so much that we actually played uh, two games in one session uh, yesterday which is quite unheard of uh, in our gaming history. So. Um, uh, there are some little things though that uh, might might deter you from the game. Now, uh, the the way that the game is set up, you need to actively block other people. So, for example, like a gemstone dealer is where you can get gems easily by paying money. If we were trying to avoid it yesterday, we we're trying to uh, see whether there's any other ways to victory other than going to the gemstone dealer. For example, we wanted to ship goods to the Sultan's Palace and see whether there's a way viable way to get gems. But because of that, uh, the player who did go to the gemstone dealer managed to get gems quite cheaply. So if uh, me and Jonathan did manage to go there and, and buy one or two gems, we could have make it a bit more difficult for the player to just win via gemstone uh, dealer. Okay, so uh, the jury is still out on that. Uh, we need a few more plays to figure out whether there's uh, more than one way of victory. Um, there are indeed different ways to get gems, but it seems that the gemstone dealer is the most straightforward way. You just get goods, sell, get the money, go there and get the gems. So that seems to be the most straightforward way to victory. So uh, we will see how. But replayability should be very high because you can randomly set up the board. Right? And uh, it's a 4x4 grid. So uh, there should be quite a lot of combinations for you to set up. 
uh, and play. All right. So sometimes maybe the, the it's, it's quite far away to get and there's a lot of distance to travel. So it could uh, make it, it will definitely make for a lot more uh, replayability for the game. Now, if you like Stander, which is also a race style game, uh, race the first to a certain amount of points, you will probably like Istanbul. So Istanbul is more uh, it's like an upgraded, uh, a more thinkier version of Stander. All right, and uh, components are very nice. Artwork is very nice as well. It's it's quite nice to look at. Um, uh, is it, the icons and and are very clear, easy to understand. Uh, setup could be a bit fiddly because you need to put all the different tiles, all the gems, and so on and so forth. But it should be quite straightforward. There shouldn't be much problems with this. So uh, that is my that's the review of Istanbul. Uh, if you like the game, do check it out. Thank you very much.